to round out our panel for this afternoon, Mr. Brent Wilkes, who is the Executive Director with LULAC. Thank you, Michael, and we're delighted to join our colleagues here today on this tremendous panel to talk about a very important part of our student population in this country. Um, if you listen to some of the folks who talk about English language learners, you get the sense that they think it's a small segment of our school population, but that's not the case. And um, we're here today to talk about how large a part of our population it is and how important their success will go to determining the economic strength of the United States far into the future. Now, I'm pleased to be joined by a large number of uh, LULAC uh, board members that are here with us today, staff, and also just LULAC members. If they could please stand, I'd like you to recognize them because they've, they've been out on the hill today um, working hard to make sure that we address our important needs. We've been, we've been wearing those, those uh, buttons, Michael, and we're getting a lot of great comments about that. People ask, what, what is it exactly are the buttons about? And it's been working quite well because um, the key thing is, um, it's important that when we talk about education policy that we bring in the people that are being affected by that policy to have a key point uh, and a, a place at the table to talk about these issues. So we've been working very hard to bring parents, to bring our members, to bring teachers themselves that are members of LULAC here to Washington to make sure that um, our policymakers hear a unique perspective from the community itself. And I did want to recognize our national president, past national president Hector Flores. He was, uh, works for the Dallas Independent School District. He uh, has a tremendous experience in this area. Of course, our national president, Rosa Rosales, a tremendous advocate on education. And um, the, these perspectives have to be part of the dialogue and the debate. So we're glad to have them here. And we're glad to partner with such a great coalition uh, working on this issue. Um, so there, there are over 5 million English language learners um, currently in public school. And that's 10.5% of our students in, in, in our nation's schools from pre-K through 12. It's the fastest growing segment of the student population. And in fact, by the year 2050, um, the or 2025, the estimate is that 25% of the um, student body will be English language learners. So imagine, these are huge numbers. About 25, more than 25 million students will be English language learners. So how we treat those students is gonna have an enormous ramification on the competitiveness of the United States and our success in our educational system. So we can't just exempt them, for example, from the, the requirements that other students face, because if we do that, we're really destroying the effort to try and hold um, our schools accountable and to make sure that all students are learning. It's a critical to them, and of course, it's critical to their parents. Um, the challenge that we currently face is that, um, despite it's the fastest growing segment of our population, ELL students are not doing as well as other students. Um, in fact, the graduation rate is only 49% for ELL students um, from high school. And for um, Latino ELL students, the dropout rate is 60%. So those are unacceptable numbers. We have to close those gaps. Um, LULAC has worked on this issue for many years. And in fact, in the 50s, uh, our president, past president, uh, Felix Tijerina, uh, developed a program called the Little School to 400 to teach 400 English words to Hispanic preschoolers with the goal of ensuring that those Hispanic preschoolers would be able to go into kindergarten and be able to um, do well in kindergarten because at that time there wasn't bilingual education, there weren't ELL classes. As I think um, the congressman had mentioned, you get slapped on a ruler if you even uttered a word of Spanish or another language. And so um, we felt we needed to help address a shortcoming in our educational system back then. Uh, President Johnson, who was a senator at the time, he helped us take that program statewide in Texas. And then when he became president, he actually used that as, a, as one of the models for Head Start. And that's something we're very proud of as an organization to have contributed to such a landmark educational program for our country. Um, but we're in need of another Head Start now. And what's important is that that Head Start include all children, um, all races, of course, but also English language learners as well. Because if we don't do something to address their needs, we're going to find ourselves in a lot of trouble down the line. The, um, the, the, um, the numbers, I think, are very telling. Um, when you look at the fact that a college graduate is expected to earn over $1 million additional over their lifetime earnings in a, in a high school dropout, that was, that's a big number just for one person. But then multiply that by 25 million people. And you pretty soon you can see that we're talking a huge impact on our economic competitiveness. And as we move into an increasingly um, a global economy that's focused on skills that are uh, college level skills that are necessary to have a good career, 
um, we've got to make sure that we're doing a lot to address this population. Um, in fact, the, if we can close the gap, if we can get ELL students to the same level as the general population, the, the amount of money that will um, realize an additional economic competitiveness and the taxes that are paid on that additional amount of money that's earned would be enough to pay off the federal deficit, the, the, the entire national debt, I should say, and have money to spare. And that's a, a, a huge thing for our country to, to be able to do that. So this is a really big, big um, uh, issue for our organization, of course, for the entire country. So I guess we, we do look at this, as Peter said, as a civil rights issue. Um, it's a matter of fairness. But if there's those out there that don't really think that fairness is important, then do it for your own economic self-interest, because um, it doesn't make sense to shortchange those, a, a certain segment of our, our country and then end up having to pay additional in taxes down the line to pay for additional uh, uh, resources to help a population that isn't earning as well. And um, if, if you want to do it for your own self-interest, do that for that reason too. But the most important thing is we've got to make sure that these students are getting a quality education. Um, the Department of Education, in fact, estimates that for, for the, um, the return on investment in education is a factor five to one. So for every dollar that we invest in, in education, we see a five-fold return on that investment. Uh, it's an investment in our students, and that's absolutely critical. Um, so we're taking this message across uh, the country. Um, we're, we're partnering with uh, the, the, the members of the coalition uh, throughout the United States to ensure that, uh, that parents, educators, that um, the students that are being affected are, are finding out about what's being debated in Congress, um, that we need to make sure that they're aware that uh, the Elementary and Secondary Edu Educa Education Act is up for your authorization. We want to make sure that they have an input in this process um, because we hear from them every day that education is the most critical issue for them and that we need to make sure that their views are taken into account. And um, through this wonderful partnership and this coalition, we're making that happen. So it's a great pleasure, Michael, to be part of this and we look forward to the questions. Thank you.